All right, so I have been working on yet another project I'm probably going to abandon at some point. But I wanted to try to expand my knowledge in TypeScript. And I think one of the best ways that you can do that is actually by building out a library or a framework that uses TypeScript and try to fight for 100% type safety. I would say most of the TypeScript usage I use is like as a, you know, a web developer just trying to use existing frameworks and libraries. But when you start building your own, I think you get exposed to a lot more advanced stuff in TypeScript, such as like generics and other things that I don't even know. I'm trying to build a file-based API, like a REST API framework that's built on top of Express and a couple of other tools where basically you can just scaffold up a project and you'll get a bunch of interesting features out of the box, such as logging, file-based routing, um, some good um, IOC container, so you can do like dependency injection and stuff like that. So this is the project here, it's called Launchpad. Uh, I just picked a random name and I'm trying to play around a little bit with the monorepo approach and like publishing NPM packages, which I'm not really good at, so I'm trying to like, you know, understand that. But you can kind of read through this. And the idea is that you can create a shuttle server and it gives you a bunch of stuff out of the box, like I kind of talked about. But the cool thing is the file-based routing where you basically make a directory and then depending on the type of file that you put, it'll accept get requests, post requests, put requests, etc. And then you can make some handlers to just do typical express handler logic. So you can kind of read through this docs. It's a work in progress, but I want to kind of demo this. If you scroll down to the bottom, it says project generator. And I want to show you how you could potentially get started by using this little project that I'm working on. I will say this is a complete prototype, so don't even think about using this in like production or anything. But if you want to play around with it and contribute to it, feel free to. If you look here, if you click sample project, this is basically this command is taking that sample project and just copying it over to whatever directory they happen to be in. You can look through there, but we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and go over to a VS Code editor here. And I'm going to go ahead and just run that. And that's going to set up a NPM project and basically clone that project directory that I talked about. And there you have it. It's been set up. Let me zoom in just one more. And once that's set up, you can say NPM run dev. And if I didn't break anything, I have a service running on port 8080. But the cool thing about this is that every API endpoint is actually mapped to a file. So if I were to check out my git at slash to do's, I can just go ahead and open that up and we can look at how this was basically set up. So some things that this library I'm working on will give you out of the box. If you do this like sample project setup is you will get automatic reloads. So if I were to save this file, notice that it refreshes the server with my new changes. And behind the scenes that is using a library called TSX with a watch command on the main TS file here. Um, and let me show you the file based routing. So I kind of like took some inspiration by Next.js. Like, you know how they do like their routing with folders that have IDs and inside of there, you can have like an index file, you can have different files. Basically, I decided to just route based on HTTP method, since that's typically what we, you know, divide our routes into when you're building a REST API. So I have a routes folder here and I have a to-dos folder. And inside of that, I have a git request. And if you were to basically hit this endpoint, let's just go ahead and load up Thunder Client and do a git request here to to-dos and click send. Notice that we get back um, a response. Uh, another thing that I'm trying to add out of the box is logging. So every time one of your API endpoints has a request made to it, you automatically get this JSON log that prints out. I'm just pretty printing it right now, but I'm probably going to put it in one line. And the idea is that the logging, I want to make it like production ready so that all the logs that are printing out, uh, you can basically just ingest into Kibana or Splunk or something, right? I think if you were to try to build out your own Express application, most people don't even add like production logging to their endpoints. And it's really important to have logging because when you have a bunch of users hitting your endpoints, if you have logs that already kind of at least document, okay, someone hit this endpoint at this time, they sent in this data and that took a certain amount of time to run. And then every request that's made along the way has a request ID attached to it, right? This is stuff that can really help you debug sticky situations in production, right? So at the very least, I want to just like every time an API endpoint is hit, just log something out so you can get some analytics and metrics on like what are your most popular endpoints? How long do those endpoints take to run? Um, and then I want to add in some abilities to basically attach a user ID and kind of scope the request ID to every single log invocation when this handler and any logging that you do 
is done. So right now there's only like three main things that I'm providing you. So out of the box, you get a .env setup. So if you have a .env file here, you can start providing some things. But the interesting thing is I'm trying to make this type safe with your environment variables. So if you go to your index file, when you set up the shuttle service like this, so you basically just import shuttle from webdevcody slash shuttle, and you call it, that is going to spin up an express service. But the interesting part is you can actually define custom environment variables here. So for example, I want to specify that I have an environment variable called my env. And what this allows you to do is if you forget to set this, and I were to go ahead and just like refresh a endpoint, notice that my application will not even start because I did not set that environment variable. So to achieve that, I'm using a package called in, invalid, e invalid, where basically you can define like a schema for your environment variables, and you have to make sure that your stuff matches whatever schema, which is pretty cool. I have a definition saying that I need an environment variable called my env. And it has to be either have or it has to be fun. So if I were to go ahead and add that back and change this to whatever, notice that this still will not work because it says I have to use have or I have to use fun. But the, the most important thing about this is in your endpoints, with this library I'm working on, you can actually just bring in that env file here and I can say env and now I have access to all of those environment variables that are injected so the next thing I'm trying to build into this um, little framework slash library is a logger that has all of the log levels that are be necessary to make a production ready application. I already kind of shared with you the logs that print out when you make requests to endpoints, but I'm using a logger called Winston, which gives you a bunch of different methods. You could do like a log.warn, you could do a logger.error, you could do a logger.silly, I believe it's called, you could do a verbose. A logger typically has something called log levels and there's different levels that are associated with the logs, right? There's like error, there's warn, there is uh, info, debug, and typically the most critical ones, for example, if I were to set my log level in my application to warn, that basically means that only warn and error are going to print out to the console, right? So let's just go ahead and try that out. I'm going to go ahead and just say warn. I'll save this. I'm going to go to my get endpoint and I'm going to say logger.error and just go ahead and like show you what a log level actually does and what its purpose is. Warn, I'll do info. So if I save this file and make that request to my backend, notice that it prints out with nice coloring. It prints out the error message. It prints out the warning message, but it doesn't print out the info message, right? Because again, in the EMV file, we said the log level is set to warn. So everything that is either warn or a higher severity log level will print out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to info, save this, make the request, and now all three of those logs should print out. And we get a nice green message for when we actually make the request to our API. Now, why would you do this? Well, let's say your server is just throwing a bunch of errors and you just want to filter down to only display the error logs, right? It costs money to save these logs somewhere. And sometimes you want to dynamically go into a running application and you want to switch the log levels to be something higher, right? So you might want to only run your application with a warn or an error. But in some instances, like let's say you want to get more metrics on endpoints, you could dynamically come into your environment variables and just switch it to info. And now your system will just print out a bunch of extra logs. You can even go higher and say debug. If there's something weird going on. You can actually add a debug and add a bunch of debug statements um, to your code base. And then that will start printing out all your debugs. So I want to kind of build that in because I, like this stuff isn't too hard to set up yourself, but it's just nice to have like something that like out of the box has all this stuff that you potentially need for a real life REST API. So I showed you ENV. I showed you the logger stuff. Um, now inject. Inject is something I'm trying to add in to basically add a um, IOC container where inside of your index file, you can basically set up some providers. And uh, basically you get a provider function that you can basically pass in keys in whatever arbitrary values that you want. Okay, this is beneficial because typically um, if you're trying to build a decoupled system, you don't want your handlers to be so coupled to your database storage methods, right? So I, I'm doing some example key here, but let's say you had a persistence method. So inside of persistence, I'll make a file called todos repo.ts. And let's just make a function called like get to do's like this. I'll make an async function and we will just return an empty array for right now. But 
In the future, this could potentially hit a database, but the idea is that you don't want your handler logic to be kind of coupled to how or where you're fetching the data from. So you can use some type of dependency injection or IOC container um, to basically set up a way for your code base to kind of inject the things that you need. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and make another one called like to-do's repo key. And the reason I'm doing like the symbol thing, I kind of stole this from Vue because I thought their symbol stuff was pretty cool. There might be an easier way to kind of set this up to be type safe, but I believe that's the, um, the main benefit of this is that it allows you to have type safety for this IOC container. And I'll go ahead and say type of, and we want to import the uh, to-do's repo from, they were persistence, we'll say to-do's repo. Did I call this default? I call it get to-do's, okay? So let's get that to-do's method, and I'm gonna go ahead and say type of here. And now this key knows what the interface is for this function, right? And I can go ahead and just register that here. I'll say provide, and then we'll say get to-do's, like that. So now anywhere in my code base, I could simply just go into the endpoint and I can just bring in that key. I can get the function called get to do's and I can say const to do's is equal to await that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just return the to do's here. Okay, so that's the idea. If I were to go ahead and hit this endpoint, we get back that empty array. But the idea is that at some point I could basically swap this out with a different type of API call. Like if I wanted to do another one, I'll say to-do's repo um, Dynamo, for example, if I wanted to write stuff to DynamoDB, I could have another implementation and this stuff could actually like talk to DynamoDB or whatever database you want. But now this is injected in a single place and I can simply just swap it out wherever I want. Okay, so I can just go here and say to-do's Dynamo and then we're gonna go ahead and just use that one instead. And there we go. Now everywhere in my code base that was kind of injecting using this key, will now get the new implementation. So another reason I'm doing this is that this kind of allows your handlers to be more easily tested. If you want to basically write a test over this, like for example, if I made a little sample pseudocode test here, um, let's say we wanted to call the handler like this, and I could basically pass in whatever mock object that I want here, and then I could pass in a mock rec and a mock res like this. And now I can kind of overwrite whatever this thing might need, right? So for example, if this thing needs an inject function, I could simply just return, like whenever someone calls inject, let's just go ahead and return the mock function that returns an array, right? So now when this code runs under test, it's just gonna return you a function here because I kind of stubbed it out. And then when you call it, it's just gonna return this stubbed value here. So it makes testing a little bit easier. I haven't really thought too hard about like the proper ways that I would expect to test this system, but I need to add testing in and like um, see see what the best interface is for kind of like allowing users to just overwrite and inject mock things. But yeah, that's uh, basically it. The, the main goal is I want this thing to be 100% type safe um, and I want it to be, I want the developer experience to be good so that like you can make whatever API endpoints that you want and you can actually get uh, very, become very productive with the things that are provided to you. I might actually switch these variables to be at the end, but this follows a more normal pattern for Express. But anyway, I kind of jumped around just showing off the different things that I built. And again, the main reason I'm even doing this was so I can get better at understanding generics and stuff like that and just understanding how to build a library with TypeScript, right? The actual, the thing that I built is not that big, right? It's like 92 lines in this file. And then there's another file here that's used for like traversing your routes folder and dynamically setting up the routes based on the files that it finds. And that's like what, 99 files or 99 lines long. So this entire like uh, library is not big. So I thought it was pretty cool. Like the, the little amount of code that you can write to basically make a library that's out of the box has a lot of stuff. Um, that's what I'm trying to work on. And the next thing I want to kind of do as well for this little project is I want to basically add a single command that you can run to have this all deploy to Amazon. Um, more specifically, I want to use AWS Lambda. And then in front of that, I want to do an API gateway and probably do like a mono Lambda approach so that all this code is hosted on a single Lambda. And then once you deploy the serverless, like if you guys use Amazon, basically all of these things will automatically log out to AWS uh, cloud watch 
So you have logging that you can kind of filter through and read through out of the box. That's the goal. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to look through this project, feel free to. If you want to contribute and just like feel like you're part of building something new and interesting, feel free to do that. I don't expect this library to actually go anywhere. This is just, again, like I said, it's a prototype and uh, it was a learning experience for me. But if you guys do find this thing useful, if you like, if you start building out a REST API and you're like, hey, this is actually pretty cool. I can build out APIs pretty quick using this. Uh, let me know. Well, I hope you guys liked watching me rant about this little thing I'm working on. Again, I will put the link to this little project that I'll probably abandon soon in the description of the video. But if you want to talk to me directly about this, feel free to join my Discord, which is also in the description links below, uh, where you can find me or just other developers to kind of talk to and just get help if you're ever stuck on anything. All right, have a good day and happy coding.